John, I have to tell you, it is incredibly inspiring to walk out here and not just see enthusiasm, but honest to God, raw talent. Yeah, this is a great event. The Team America Rocket Challenge is a one-of-a-kind thing that's a partnership between the National Association of Rocketry and the Aerospace Industries Association. We did it for the first time seven years ago, thinking it would be a one-time deal. This is the seventh year. As you can see, it's going strong. I hope it'll be around for many more years. Well, from your position in an industry that's constantly looking for tomorrow's talent, are you seeing this as something that can really focus the kind of people you're looking to get a hold of a decade hence? Absolutely, Jim. I think this is the kind of event that's aimed at getting kids excited and getting entrained in science and math. You know, the, the high school years are really formative. As you look back at it, you realize how formative it is, and a lot of important decisions get made without kids even realizing they're making those decisions, right? And so the idea here is to is to cast the net very broadly, get as many kids entrained and thinking about engineering, kids who, who might not necessarily do that. There's obviously a lot of competing things to do these days when you're growing up. Um, but this is a way of trying to get people to sort of try out the engineering and hopefully stay with it for the long term. What advice would you give a young man or a young woman who's out here figuring out how to make sure that their rocket goes 825 feet high and stays in the air so long and doesn't make an omelet at the end? I mean, there's just these great challenges and there's some tremendous engineering exercises, but you've certainly made your nut in the world. You, you know where you are in all this and you're the guy who's going to be hiring them in the future. What advice do you have for them right now? Well, I think the biggest advice is, is, is sort of, uh, you know, figure out what you like to do and then figure out how to get paid for it. And this is a great way to take something that's a lot of fun on the surface, but has a lot of substance, many layers as you go deeper and deeper into it and can lead to a really important career. A lot of the folks out here who are organizing it and running it came up through these types of events. This is probably a little more elaborate, a little more formal than we had growing up. But, uh, you know, we're looking to, to share that uh, mentorship and get, get people entrained in the industry as, and the hobby both. Now, another moment of freedom from Sirius Aircraft. Freedom through safety. Perhaps the ultimate freedom is confidence, assurance, and peace of mind. We design it into every personal aircraft we build. It's the security that comes with knowing you're flying the plane with a parachute. The breakthrough concept that launched the Cirrus phenomenon. What are you seeing here in regards to the, the tasks that have been set, uh, set forth here? Is this, uh, is this a kind of problem solving that really leads to the uh, defining of a role that somebody's going to use to define their career? It's not only problem solving with an engineering bent, but it's also working collaboratively in, in teamwork, which is one of the things that's very hard in engineering to capture, particularly at the, at the high school level, right, where people are used to working on homework by themselves, right? As you, the older you get, the further you get into this, you realize that no big aerospace activity is an individual activity at all. It's huge collaborative. Teams of people, large organizations, even countries working together like the, on the International Space Station. And the neat thing about this is that it not only pulls you right into the engineering, makes you do the science, the math, but it also drives home the collaborative part early on. What message would you send to your brethren in industry about not just supporting concepts like TARC, but what else can we do, especially a time when there's all kinds of questions about where uh, the youth in this country is going and the examples that are being set for them, but what would you tell industry about this event and others like it? Well, I think this type of event where industry really reaches out in a collaborative fashion, and again, this is the professional side, the industry and the aerospace uh, industries association, and a very focused uh, hobby side, uh, the National Association of Rocketry, those kinds of collaborations are very, very productive and can really open doors for everybody. It's a true win-win uh, opportunity. One of the other things that's been very impressive is I've, I've watched, there was this marvelous team this morning that had two misfires, yeah. finally got it out on their third and, and pulled off a great flight. Yeah. But watching their mentor, a fellow <laughs> uh, from, from NAR, being very patient yes. and being very encouraging. But all the NAR people here are just blowing my mind in regards to the way that they're handling this. They're not talking down. In many cases, it's just, they're looking, they're talking as if to a colleague. They've been just tremendously patient about this, but it seems to me that NAR, most, more than most other organizations, really understands that 
what they need is happening right here. That is one of the really unusual things about the, the uh, model rocketry as a hobby is that it is something where people of many different ages actually can collaborate as peers. It's, it's very remarkable. I haven't seen many things like it during my lifetime. Literally you have families out there and there, it's not the generational divide. People really are working together as peers. There's also a big mentorship part in this. Most of the people out here had one or more people that mentored them along, whether they were teachers, they were people they met in the hobby, they were people who met in, in school, who made a real difference to them, and all of these people recognize that and look at this as a way to, it's called paying forward, you can't really ever pay back, but it's uh, paying forward is a big concept for a lot of the people involved in this. If you own a Cirrus today or if you're considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. Avidyne, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidyne Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3R9, combining the best airframe, best engine, and best avionics for the best value. I'd imagine you're walking around at this point and probably ready to start taking some resumes off of some of these kids. Uh, these, it's a fantastic group of kids. It really gives you a lot of faith in the future of the country to have this kind of talent out here and interested and focused and you know we have to work together to make sure all that energy gets channeled in the right directions and keeps America at the forefront in, uh, in aerospace. That's a lot of what this is, is how we stay at the, in a leadership position. America didn't get to be the preeminent aerospace country by accident and it's not something that we can take for granted. We really have to, have to work on it. A lot of people in the last 100 years did a lot of careful planning, a lot of visionaries drove this country to where it is today. This is part of keeping that going. And I really want them to see the passion that's right out here in these fields right now. Yeah, yeah I'm glad you're here. you got to see it to believe it. So. Really, no question about it. Final question. Sure. What would you like to see for TARC from here on out? Well, you know, I mentioned that Seven years ago when TARC started, it was viewed as let's try this as a one-time thing. It's been so successful that it's now in its seventh year. Uh, we'd like to see it continue. We'd like to see it expand. There's In the last couple of years, it's, there have started to be international versions of that. And this summer, there'll be teams from France and from England competing against the winners of the American competition. So, you know, a lot of this, you kind of follow what works and do more of it, keep expanding that. Um, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of potential still in this. Well, sir, we thank you for supporting this community so well, and we look forward to seeing you in well, future thanks TARCs. For, thanks for coming out, Jim, and we appreciate your support and coverage of it. So. Well, from here on out, I wouldn't miss this. Yeah. Great. Good. We'll see you next week.